Hey guys, it's Kai and today we're going to be doing a video about kind of my process and the problem with my process is this is that I don't always do it exactly the same all the time. Now I, I, I just finished a book called Dragons and it's a children's book and uh, most of those were done pretty much uh, consistently um, as far as the way I started them to the way I end them. But as an artist, one of the things that I like to do is I like to try different things a lot, loads, all, pretty much all the time. And it, it allows me to, if I paint that way where I'm trying to push myself to learn different ways, uh, when I am doing something that I normally do, it's a little bit easier for me to solve problems um, because uh, by forcing myself to do something different than I normally would, um, I, I can think, kind of start to think around things. So in this video, uh, I've, I've had a few people ask me about showing my process and this is one of my processes uh, as far as uh, this one in particular goes. Uh, as far as uh, what do I do normally all the time, I usually do start out with a sketch. So you're going to see that in this and this starts from a sketch all the way to the end. This video is also kind of connected to the tutorial that I did on amphibian skin. So if you, when I start to do the scales on, on this little creature that I, I created, I call him Little Booger. Um, if you, if you're interested in exactly how that works, I did, I did that other tutorial where I talked through it, and I'll try to leave a link uh, in in the description, and so you guys can take a look at it. But otherwise, here we go, Little Booger. So I'm going to be watching this with you guys, and uh, as I said, most generally I start out with a basic sketch. Now with this one, I also took some references. I wanted something kind of obviously amphibian-like, so I, I put some references up next to, or, or I should say on my second screen, and I constantly look at those throughout the process. Did I know exactly what I wanted? No, I, I just kind of liked different aspects. I knew I wanted something amphibian, something a little bit wet, something slick. And and sometimes what happens is the, the art kind of takes over itself. Like by this point, I, I feel like it's, it's starting to kind of uh, tell me what I'm going to be doing in the rest of the image. Um, I don't always get everything down solid and perfect in my sketch. Uh, a lot of the times I, I find problems when, once I'm into my painting, and this one's no different than that. Uh, I, I enjoy the painting process much more than the sketching. Not the sketching's horrible or anything like that, but uh, I, I, I do find that I, I feel like I can figure things out a little bit better within the painting. So what I did here was I, I got my basic sketch, and then I uh, dropped the opacity of it, and now I'm sketching over top of it. And as always, my dog is behind me, and if you hear it snoring, I'll try to I'll try to rouse it so it doesn't do it, do it too loudly. So yeah, I'm just kind of figuring out the legs, uh, figuring out the back, and uh, I, I like I said, I, I wanted something amphibian, and then at this point, it, he was really kind of looking like a booger to me. <laughs> so like, it, if a booger could be a creature. Here you go. And that's why I stuck his finger in his nose. <laughs> so I, I I got a kick out of this little creature and, and I, I feel like he turned out pretty good. So I was pretty happy with it. Um, uh, th this is more, um, if you watch a lot of my videos, I do, I try, at least I try to do different styles and uh, I'll do some that are more um, children's book and some that are more realistic. And this one goes more, um, into a, a realistic type of uh, type of creature. So, but as I was saying before, I I, I don't like being stuck on one particular style. Uh, I have a lot of fun um, breaking away and uh, doing something different. Now I've finished my sketch, and this this right here is going underneath my sketch. And this, I'm doing value. So I, I'm uh, I'm I'm trying to get better at painting through value and then into color. So I do it every now and then to uh, really kind of test how, how, how well I can do with it. So this whole part is really about value. 
And I try a few different things out, um, but right here, I'll take a brush and I'll throw some lighter color on it, and then I use a smudge tool and I smudge it and throw some more color or tone on it, I guess, uh, the, the brighter color, and then I smudge it again. So it kind of smooths it out. I get to a point where uh, I'm, I'm done with the smoothing, so I, I get the, the, the basic value range that I'm looking for, and then I kind of add a little bit of texture to it um, with another brush. Right here, I'm just kind of playing with it. How exactly do I want that jaw? How do I want the belly? And I wasn't happy with that background. Didn't think it looked right. But really, all, that's all it is right now, is I'm going back and forth, painting in a little bit, smudging it, some dark, some light. When you're doing value, you don't want it to go totally white, and you don't want to go totally black. And you'll see eventually on this, I, I, I believe I, I get a little bit too far black and a little bit too far light. So I stick up three values in um, the top left corner here in a little bit. That way I, I can kind of color pick and go, this is as bright as I want to get and this is as dark as I want to get. It doesn't always work that way as soon as you start messing with the levels or the curves and things like that. But, you know, it, it kind of, it, it's almost a reminder, visual reminder to me that this is where I want to be. So right now I begin to kind of mold different uh, textures and different parts of his body um, with the paintbrush. This brush I'm using right here has a little bit of a texture to it. It's one of the ones I've made. I thought his uh, face didn't have enough character. So that's the thing about wrinkles. Anytime you're doing creatures and stuff, wrinkles it, wrinkles really add a lot of character to, to a, a creature, and they're they're fun to do. Even when I finish this um, grayscale, I, I never finish the eyes. So I, I, the eyes are one of the last things that I do in the whole thing, even after uh, adding the color to it. And here I grab a, a brush um, for smudging that almost makes it look like I'm painting dots, but it added a little bit of texture. Getting that nose. Wasn't really sure about the nose exactly how I wanted it, but I knew it had to be open and available for uh, for finger picking. <laughs> but how funny is that, you know, a booger itself would pick its own nose. <laughs> I don't know, I think that's hilarious. So um, I use a lot of layers almost, you know, every time I, paint anything and with this what I'll do is I'll go up to one layer and then I'll uh, merge it after I'm, I'm happy with it and if I don't like what I've done I can either erase it and I haven't damaged the rest of the image below so which is why I use layers a lot I was trying to figure out how to do his hand and, and this is this is where the hand stays of course but uh, I, I wanted to kind of like I, I didn't want the hands Kind of in the same angle you know one pick and everything and i want uh, so that's why i chose one down one kind of on his hips like <laughs> i thought it made the the stance a little bit uh, more dynamic Yeah, not too much to say right here. It's just um, I, I try a few different brushes to add a little bit of texture to the value or the to the piece. Oh, and there's the there's the values up there in the corner uh, when when you do get to see them because I, I actually grab grab them and bring them down and that way I don't go too bright with those the lighter colors or the lighter value. I, I always hate saying that. I'm used to saying color. Lighter value, brighter value. There they are. I'm messing with his feet. I 
and then there we go curves a little bit not a big adjustment but um, you know a lot of anything you do is is always little bits little bits little bits uh, and eventually all those little changes you know create your image so And here's where I'll start messing with the eyes. I hadn't really referenced um, an, an, uh, an amphibian's eye yet. Uh, I think I sort of did right there, but I wasn't sure what to do. So I put this in and I leave it there until I get towards the end of the painting. And then I do the eye. Now this painting has no added um, photo textures. It is just you know custom brushes and you know, just all out painting. That's all this this whole thing is. Oh, and here what I did was I duplicated the layer, I colorized the layer, and I turned a layer into green, turned a layer into yellow, and turned a layer into blue, and then I put masks on each one, and that allowed me to kind of uh, paint out, so I could paint out the yellow and paint out the green and everything. Oh, before I miss it, here's the scales part. And if you want to know more about how to do this, take a look at my um, how to paint amphibian skin. Uh, it's another tutorial on there and that these really are go together. So you kind of get the basics of what I'm doing at this moment right here and how and how to do it. So makes it a little bit easier to understand and the video is not this fast either but essentially I, I laid down this with a, a brush I made and you know mess with it I think I ended up putting them on soft light here I did the same thing I as far as duplicating the creatures layer he's he's like a really dark blue and then I put dots on him and then kind of erased out the dots with a mask. Here I'm adding texture to his belly. I add um, a shadow behind him and then I blur them too with a Gaussian blur. Here I start trying to make uh, the, the uh, skin look a little bit wet. I think this whole this whole process took me around five hours, I think. Um, which, you know, I'm pretty happy with, so. <laughs> I love that finger in the nose. <laughs> oh. Here we go, I start messing with the eye a little bit, I guess. Or do I? Yeah, okay, so I'm adding some more light. There's another brush I made. Uh, but this, it's, it gives it that scaly look, not scaly, wet uh, amphibian, you know, um, skin look. And then I mess around with it, I erase out of it, I paint it down, erase out of it, and then I, I may have put it in a screen layer, I don't remember, or I may have just erased it out and then dropped the opacity. A lot of the times you just kind of play with it and, and you know that was a multiply layer for the shadows here I'm using um, a texture brush to try to add some texture to that uh, the back of the booger <laughs> and that's what a uh, skin is even even human skin human skin is a lot of different textures it's variations it's not just one thing and then you're done uh, it, as far as you know if you're trying to do something a little bit more realistic so I go back and forth with adding something dark something light to the skin just to kind of give it that look of, uh, of that it's three-dimensional and it's not a, a flat object his eyelid I add a little bit of yellow to the eye because you, whatever your skin tone is, your eye kind of picks that up because of reflection and everything. So that's what I do a lot. I'm using a, like a little splatter brush for the eye and then I just kind of go crazy with a, 
another brush and here's another brush and I just kind of uh, this was based on reference this one frog's eye that I saw was it was very kind of crazy and had oranges and yellows in it and uh, it almost looked like spider webby the black inside the eye was very spider webby so that's kind of where I got that from blurring out the kind of the side of the eye um, with a brush adding the a, a light to the eye and that gives it kind of that look that it's round and wet I, I was pretty happy with the eye I think the eye turned out pretty good adding a little bit of wet around around the bottom of the eye like it's a little, little tear sort of thing and then I do add some texture even to the eyelid itself I, that was also referenced uh, the eye that I was looking at in the reference had a, even dark around the texture of the eyelid so use that reference it, it comes in handy if you're not sure exactly how something looks man phew, use it this is just like some sort of organic -y brush that I, I got and I, I raced out most of it but there's little bits in it and that helps I duplicated the eye I took it over to the other side I did not take the reflection because obviously the reflection on the other side is going to be different. So I left the reflection on a different layer because I knew that I was going to be doing that. And there we go, adding the reflection. And then I race out some, that, that way it looks like there's things in the reflection, some shadows. It's not an absolute perfect, perfect light source. I start going around the edges. The edges looked kind of like uh, they've been cut out and almost like those some white white parts. So I go around all the edges right here and just kind of paint over top of it because it didn't look right to me. And just messing with the shadows. Brightness, contrast, vi vibrance, saturation, uh, color, color balance. Those are some of the things I, I do towards the end um, to try to get that color that I want. That's, yeah, I'm color dodging it right here. So uh, when you color dodge, you actually have to do it right on the same layer. Otherwise, if you have a color dodge layer over top, it, it doesn't give you the same effect. So if you do color dodge, uh, maybe, one, maybe one of the things you want to do at the end. I duplicated the layer, blurred it a little bit, and I can't remember if I made it a, a screen layer or what. Added a noise layer kind of blend things together and there it is that's little booger so that's it if you guys have any questions about what I did right here you know feel free to ask as I said before if you want to look at how the scales were done uh, that amphibian skin I'll leave a link to the other other tutorial uh, in the description and you know I, I I decided to do this one based off of uh, someone someone's comment in the description I think his name is David so if you guys have any questions let me know and I'll try to make a video based on it and I'm sure I'm going to do another one of these because this isn't the end-all be-all way that I paint everything all the time so you know I, I kind of like to explore as an artist and everything like that and I, I feel like it helps me grow and you know what if if I can do something that that you guys see that you guys haven't seen before then you know it should hopefully help you guys out as well. So that's about it. If you guys want to support me more, then subscribe. I have a Patreon. I have a Gumroad, as I always say. And otherwise, you know, appreciate the support. Please share my videos and uh, comment and like. And I'll see you guys later. Thanks.